Greetings, this is Paul the Poke from paulthepoke.com, and welcome to This Week in Prophecy. And on tap this week, we got CBS, that's right, cable news, not cable news, <laughs> regular news, CBS and a red heifer, or red heifers. Crocus Hall in Moscow, Putin's reelected, and the sea security belt exercise out in the Middle East in the Gulf of Oman. So... I'm going to start with uh, Numbers 19, verses 5 through 6. And the heifer shall be burned in his sight. Its skin, its flesh, and its blood with its dung shall be burned. And the priest shall take cedar wood and hyssop and scarlet yarn and throw them into the fire burning the heifer. Now, allegedly, this is a, well, it's a ramp. I suspect the altar, this is where the high priest would officiate the service uh, from up above. This is not the altar. Some people are reporting this is the altar. Well, the altar has specifications of certain types of materials and woods and how they arrange the fire and or the, the wood for the fire. Uh, my guess is this is where they would officiate, the high priest would officiate the service from. But nonetheless, it's built. And... Um, They've taken some precautions over in Israel, the Temple Institute, and some other groups. Um, but it goes back to since when does CBS care about the Bible, and specifically Numbers 19 and what it has to say about a red heifer? Now, uh, frankly, all credit to CBS and Chris Livesay. He did a really good job with just the nuts and bolts of, of what's going on over there. Uh, it's about a five minute story that was done and presented on CBS Saturday morning, a couple of weeks ago. Um, I was frankly kind of shocked. Um, and it got right to the heart of the matter, accurately pointed out comments from Hamas and frankly, their justifications for their actions into Israel on October 7, 2023. And this is a statement we had covered this at the time. Uh, they had a little hundred day update. That'd be the folks at Hamas, Abu Obeda, military spokesman, Al Qassam brigades, Hamas. And he made the comment when it's translated, we look back a hundred days to remember the educated, the complicit and the incapacitated among the world powers governed by the law of the jungle reminding them of an aggression that reaches its peak against our path, Al-Quds and Al-Aqsa. So Al-Quds is what they call Jerusalem, and Al-Aqsa is, of course, the Temple Mount, the, the mosque on the southern end of the Temple Mount. With the start of its actual temporal and spatial division and the bringing of red cows, and that's, that's the reference of the red heifer, and, well, frankly, red heifers, uh, five of them, as an application of a detestable religious myth designed for aggression against the feelings of an entire nation in the heart of its Arab identity and the path of its prophet, the night journey and ascension into heaven. So, you know, Hamas is telling you, this is one of the reasons why they did what they did. Launching an attack into Israel, killing all the people, raping women, all the activities they engaged in. Um, as part of their justification. And the CBS article looks at many different perspectives on the issue, including a Christian perspective. Now, I know there are plenty of folks out there in Christendom who are going to read the quote and hear what, what is said uh, by the rancher out there in Texas, and they're going to disagree with him, and that's fine. Um, we're not all going to agree with the position CBS chose to represent on the topic of the red heifer sacrifice and its necessity. So do we need sacrifices anymore? No, we don't. Jesus is that sacrifice. And we are the tent, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit as a believer. We're sealed with the Spirit. And so, yes, sacrifices are no longer necessary. But that said, um, this is a comment from Byron Stinson, and he's the Texan who helped bring the uh, heifers to Israel. And there are five of them. And his quote is, we're going to accept the Messiah, that'd be Jesus, and we need the Messiah to come. 
for me, the red heifer is red for the blood of Jesus Christ. That's why it's red. Pure, pure, innocent blood that pays for sin. And that's why the red heifer cannot have any blemishes, any defects. It must be completely red. And that's the understanding of it. And his point is, is he is ready to, um, hey, this is what y'all need, and we know we got to have that in order for a third temple and so forth, and I'm going to do what I can to help facilitate the process. Um, and here's the link to CBS News. I'll scroll on this real quick. Um, whoops. Come on, Johnsonville Brats. Not responding. There we go. Um But here's the the article from CBS News, and it's a five-minute presentation Um, from from Texas to the West Bank. uh, Here are the red heifers. As I understand it, one has been disqualified for Remain, Um, and they talked to the guy. Yitzhak Mamo. Uh, he's part of a group that wants to see the Jewish temple built. And they interview him. He's pretty fun to listen to. Highly recommend listening to this and reading this. Uh, they look at it from an Arab perspective, Muslim perspective. And uh, they spend a little bit of time on a the evangelical perspective. Uh, and of course, you know, when you hear, hear evangelicals talk about this, <laughs> they think it's crazy talk, <laughs> but, um, nonetheless worth, worth reading, worth watching the video, uh, all things considered pretty well done by CBS. Um, and also keep in mind, it's been about five years ago now, but the temple Institute, they have practiced the sacrifice, sacrificial burning process for the red heifer here's a link to that article we covered that at the time you guys want to see that click on this go back refresh your your memory on that or get the specifics they know how much wood they need what spices the amount of spices and all the different things according to the law they they've done their homework and again um of the five red heifers delivered to Israel from Texas, four appear to remain as possible candidates. And and I know we get feedback on this every time we put something up about sacrificing red heifers. Uh, don't have to sacrifice. Don't have to sacrifice. Sacrificial system's done. Yes, I get it. But it has to happen before the third temple can re, can be rebuilt. And there has to be a third temple for the Antichrist to defile. That is also prophetic. We know he's going to go in there and claim to be God. you got to have a temple to do that. Jesus said it himself. Jesus quoted Daniel. And Paul confirms it in some of his writings. So it's, it's going to go down, whether it's necessary or not. Um, which brings us to Passover of this year, 2024. Uh, The appointment begins at sunset on Monday, April 22nd, 2024, on our Western Gregorian calendar. And speculation is running high. There could be a red heifer sacrifice. And if that were to take place, probably would take place across the valley from uh, the Temple Mount on the Mount of Olives. So, and I'll caution uh, people too. Second Peter three verse twelve, looking for and hastening, hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be destroyed by burning and the elements will melt with intense heat. It's a reminder of what's to come, and you know we're to be anxiously waiting for that. And you can look at that Greek word with hastening and make somewhat of an argument. Hey, let's if we can do some things to facilitate the the coming of the day. Now, I you know, I think it's all gonna happen on 
on God's timing on a specific day as he marks time. And all of this will come to be on his calendar, on his clock, not on ours. But uh, I think there is a specific day that is ordained for this to, to happen. Um, but that's a discussion for another day. Uh, but, you know, as you know, kind of the symbolism, well, it's not symbolism, a red heifer is going to get burned and sacrificed by fire. I find it interesting. Peter talks about looking for and hastening the coming of the day of the God and the elements of fire are there. Uh, judgment would be the idea. Now, the red heifer judged with fire. Christ was judged on a cross, paid the penalty for sin. Um, at any rate, interested in any anything's happening red heifer my gosh we've got posts and articles on this going back seven to ten years or so just following any red heifer news so feel free to check that out uh red heifer burning practice heifer burning practice we have an article on that also recommend the cbs link um uh, just kind of blows me away that they spent five minutes of their precious time <laughs> on the issue of the red heifer. Oh, what a, what a time. Uh, with that, we're going to transition to the ancient land of Magog or what is modern day Russia. And they've had a bad week, bad weekend. Um, uh, major terrorist attack has occurred in Moscow at Crocus, city hall concert hall uh, and as of the writing of this and the posting of this there have been 11 at least 11 arrested by russian authorities death toll at this time is up to 143 and conflicting numbers i've seen as high as 115 are in the hospital uh we're gonna go to daily mail and just kind of hit the highlights again links provided for those who want to um read this for whatever reason things are not responding this morning there we go um most of this is pictorial here's a picture of the four suspects the, the primary four and these are the four if anybody's seen the video four guys with machine guns going into the concert hall and just opening fire on people their names allegedly suggested terrorists could have escaped in a white Renault car. Um, picture reportedly the same car in Bryansk region of Russia, trying to get out of there, go back to the Ukraine is the thinking. Uh, there is a picture of Crocus city hall concert hall. So they open fire on a whole bunch of people and then set the thing on fire. Broken glass, again, the machine guns, unfortunately, body bags, bullet casings, um, burned out building. Look at some of the different damage on the inside. Um, now, ISIS claimed responsibility for this, and they're sticking to their guns. Some of the reports have money being traced back, like some of these people were paid in Turkish lira. Um, Putin, of course, is accusing Ukraine being involved. Ukraine saying, no, we didn't have anything to do with it. Here are the four with their machine guns just opening fire on people. Uh, have some video. And here's images of the fire. Just walk in and set the place on fire after they shot a bunch of people. Um, yeah, that's a great point, too. Here's a map. It's located in the northwest part of the city. So give everybody a flavor. Ge you know, just geography of where this took place. Um, allegedly the United States told him, warned Putin dismissed U U S warnings about a terror attack three days before 
Moscow massacre and shrugged off American embassies' warnings to Americans in Moscow to avoid concert venues. So U.S. is putting out that we had uh, we had an intel that, hey, something was getting ready to go down. We warned our own citizens. Putin allegedly dismissed that. Um, probably going to hear all kinds of things, all kinds of finger pointing. But I suspect, I mean, you're going to hear lots of stories, just who you're going to believe. Um, here's what the, the hall looks like on the inside. And people trying to get out of there. And this all gets burned eventually. Yeah. Our State Department sending out conflicting messages too. Um, you know, on the one hand, hey, we warned them. Then on the other hand, we don't have any. We don't know anything about it. Well, whatever. Um, pretty rough deal. Pretty rough deal. And I saw a quote from one of the ISIS. There, you know, had. how they'd gone in essentially they'd targeted the place because they thought there were going to be a lot of christians there was what their thinking was okay so we'll wait for this to refresh um isis again claiming responsibility and daily mail i just find daily mail to do a much more thorough job getting into the details of this than some of the other mainstream press. Uh, how the attack of Moscow unfolded, um, blow by blow. Again, we have video guys showing up in camo. I think a lot of this will be similar to what we saw in the initial article. Same photos. Yeah, pretty much. You know, even as Islamic State says it was behind the Moscow massacre, Putin cynically points the finger at Kiev. Okay. He had a speech. He came out with a speech. He says he's going to get to the bottom of it. Now, however, there is, well, however, a video circulating on X, formerly known as Twitter, um, of the 11 arrested using some interesting interrogation techniques involving electricity uh, to get information out of these folks. Probably going to be um, <laughs> going to violate some international law with those, but they'll get to the bottom of it. Um, we're worried about some waterboarding, not, not to minimize waterboarding, but electricity, attached to different body parts um, to get people to talk. I think you know where that's going. Um, anyhow, both these from Daily Mail. These are the two I, I thought were the, were the best of the two. So links provided for both of them. <clears throat> and then it, also if you just go to Google, type in uh, Crocus Hall, Daily Mail, multiple, multiple articles at least 10, 10 plus. So I, I took the two that I thought were most interesting or the best just as an overview of the actual events that happened. So, um, you know, these events followed earlier in the week, Putin was reelected. So clearly he's consolidated power since what, 2020. And he's going to have more flexibility to respond accordingly when it comes to international affairs. And he's got people, I read one article, he has people who are more uh, fundamental, hardliners. And they're, they're through messing around with Ukraine. And they are telling Putin to, to launch nuclear weapons against Ukraine and the West. They've had enough. So he's got those voice, he has those voices coming at him to ramp this up and end it. Um, and he won the, uh, presidential election, <laughs> 87% of the vote dominating performance by Vlad 
Uh, I think there, that was the other 13% was split by three other candidates. So they, at the most, had 4%. Um, but he's, uh, he's in power six-year term until 2030. So he's not encumbered by any, like, like he has any pressure in the first place on winning re-election. But this isn't coming up again for another six years. And it's got to be freeing for him to know that he can do whatever he wants from that standpoint, not that that's a factor. Um, anyway, I guess one of his opponents, uh, political opponents, had died leading up to the election. Mysteriously, he passed along his condolences at his acceptance speech. So... Uh, and he had this happen earlier. Uh, Vice Grod, uh, Macron, President Macron from France. No point in negotiating with Putin. We've nego- negotiated as much as we could, but there is nothing to talk about with Putin anymore. Ukraine must win. There will be no red lines for France. I'm the president of France and I decide. Well, <laughs> tough guy. <laughs> He's, and he has sent or is going to send. I've seen several reports indicating he has sent 2,000 troops to Ukraine and uh, 2,000 French troops. And he's going to send some more equipment. So, um, they're going to go get, go get Russia. Well, we'll see. Um, but he, he, he was talking pretty tough. Now him and Putin, uh, Putin has fun at him and kind of mocks him for his climate stance and gets after him pretty good. That being Macron. So these two have clearly sparred in the past, but you know, Macron thinks he's just, he's going to decide. Well, okay. We'll see. Uh, I just have real concern. This would appear to be a tipping point. Things probably going to escalate some more from here. Uh, and with that, we're going to transition revelation 16 verse 12. Uh, focus on the kings of the east to prepare the way for the kings from the east. Now, what happened this past week over in the Gulf of Oman is not the fulfillment of Revelation 16. That's later in the seven-year tribulation. Tribulation has yet to start. We're not there yet. So, But it is a sign of things to come. Russia, China, and Iran recently completed the naval portion of the Sea Security Belt 2024. Uh, They had over 20 ships joined in the drills. My favorite piece of this, for their part, Iran states, the exercise will help support initiatives of world peace and maritime security. They're the fun little two words, peace and security. You know, when you see peace and security... You know, and the the world is celebrating and humanity is celebrating that we're going to have peace and security. That's the time to get nervous, according to God. That's when it all goes down for the worst. It is not going to bring about peace and security. So, at any rate, here's the link to the article. Uh, This was provided by um, U.S. Naval Institute News uh, link provided for this as well. Gulf of Oman back here, Persian Gulf up here. Um, Russia, China, and Iran got together. Um, and this this year's iteration is the first to allow observers from other countries: Pakistan, Kazakhstan, Azerbaijan, Oman, India, and South Africa. We just had one group. Brazil, the BRICS companies, they, for whatever reason, they weren't there. Uh, But the rest of the crew was there. Keep in mind, they're trying to develop their own currency. Um, 
And here are the ships listed. People's Liberation Army Navy from China lists the ships involved. Uh, Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps Navy lists their ships involved. Russia listed some of their ships. And they're going to do some uh, nighttime firing, or they did some nighttime firing. Live firing simulating unmanned air vehicles, so how to target drones, essentially. And then they were going to carry out hostage rescue drills with two Iranian ships playing the role of hijacked merchant ships. So remind those folks, it's the, uh, the groups uh, under... Iran's control, little proxy groups, they're the ones doing all the pirating and hijacking out there in the oceans. So, don't know that you need to practice against what your own people are already doing. Um, but, uh, of course, with this, Japan's Joint Staff Office um, reported some Chinese activity in the East China Sea in the Philippine Sea uh, before returning to the East China Sea. So things are heating up over there in the Pacific as well, uh, in and around Taiwan. I guess China had some live firing access or live firing activities in and around the Straits of Taiwan close to the island. A little bit closer every time. So been a busy week. Um, and again, uh, th this is just more of a trend. United States Embassy vacated, this time in Haiti. That's a mess. I don't know if you guys have seen that. Um, we pulled people out of there, out of the U.S. Embassy. Apparently, cannibals are in control in Haiti and doing what cannibals do. Um there's scripture about that. Now, granted, it's in the Middle East and in and around Israel, but we got that stuff taking place over in our hemisphere, off the island of Haiti. Um, and what do we got? Six embassies that have been vacated, evacuated under President Biden. I well, remember what happened in Afghanistan. Uh, we pulled people out of Ukraine, Belarus. Belarus makes sense because... Uh, Russia and Belarus are tight. Uh, even now in Sudan, Haiti, and Niger. Um, Biden's weakness, this is from Elise Stefanik. She's a Congress congresswoman from uh, New York. Biden's weakness has created a world in chaos. And just, just as a trend, uh, where the United States has left and is leaving, especially in the Middle East, you know, a prophetic domino is set up, if you will. And, you know, every, every place we step out of the way, um, groups that will play a role in the end times scenario take its place, is what it is. So that, uh, if anybody's interested and feels like sharing this, sure would appreciate it. Uh, Still think I'm getting messed with on Twitter. It's funny, I can put up a regular tweet and put some hashtags on it, and that'll get two or 300 responses. But when I put one of these This Week in Prophecies up, only 11 respond. Only less than 20 will see it. I just don't believe that. But part of the deal. Keep putting it out there. So encouraging others to share. Uh, spread it around. Only way we're going to get the word out. We're we're up against a stacked deck, if you will. And granted, Twitter X is a whole lot better than it used to be. But you can forget it on some of the other uh, Google-owned platforms, Meta-owned platforms. They, they clearly mess with stuff. So please feel free to share with others. Uh, it's also available on Telegram, Facebook. Somehow gets out on Instagram. No response hardly at all on Instagram. There's the little the little X bird. Um, also, if you're not a subscriber, type in your email address here. Hit subscribe. You'll get notification every time we put something out. We got, uh, holy cow, big month.
coming up with uh, going to have some stuff coming out on the eclipse it's set to take place April 8th. And we got the uh, spring feast coming up at the end of April. So look for things to, to happen and get busy. Anyhow, talk to y'all later. Have a good one. Bye.